Hi everyone, Brett here at High Altitude Scale Modeling. Today we're going to do a new kit review for you. We're going to do the new Mang 124 scale Hummer H1. Beautiful box art. Probably a beautiful kit. Mang's that way. There's some color callouts. Let me get them up there because they're hard to read in the silver. See if we get some focus. There we go. Color callouts. And you've got a dark blue black one on that side and information about the Hummer there pause it if you want to read it if it stops focusing in and out and then another side view of the red one brand new kit copyright 2016 and kit number CS002 see what we've got in here. Alright, colored spruce. Interesting. Alright, set this off to the side here. And we'll start with the body. Self-sealed bag, heat sealed bags. This is looks like the hood or bonnet for you. The other part of the kit world. And the roof. Very thick plastic. Very shiny plastic. I got fingerprints all over it. I guess if you don't want to have to pay, you don't have to. Lots of ejector pin marks inside the hood, and there's some nice detail here. But if you want to show the hood open, you got to clean up all these ejector pin marks. Same with the top. If you want to take the top off, it's got all those ejector pin marks in it. Plus, it's got the main copyright information right there. So, for me, I'm going to fill in all these ejector pin marks, sand that off, because I when I build a car I usually make the top whatever the top is made of for the real car so either some type of carpeting or some type of paneling whatever they put on the roof of a particular vehicle this side of it looks really good see the grill right there grill work headlights place for the turn signal lights almost looks like the front of a Jeep Next brew we got is black. And this one contains, looks like, the interior. So, fender wells. Looks like this would be the underneath because there's a skid plate for the front. So this is the detail underneath and still I don't know how all these will be seen, these ejector pin marks, but there's still some here and here, here, here. If you're going to see this, you're going to have to clean those up. This side looks like what you build the interior on. And there are no ejector pin marks in this part. So maybe you're not meant to see all these parts. And the parts you are meant to see is all cleaned up. Over here, I have no idea what the parts are, but it looks like part of the one of the bumpers. Yeah, it's got to be because it's got tow hooks on it. And then more tow hooks. I don't know what these parts are, but look how tiny some of these little parts are. Very fine. We have to clean that part out right there without breaking them. More very fine details. I have to see what these are in the instructions. There's a brush guard for the front. I believe these would be going around the tail lights. But I'm not sure. We'll check that out. This part here, look how fine the It's gonna be tough getting it off of there without breaking it. But no flash. No burring. Very cleanly molded parts in that respect. 
a third colored sprue. This one in gray with all the interior parts. So I'm guessing they designed it so you wouldn't have to paint it if you didn't want to. Alright. Seats, seat backs, seat cushions. There's even some very nice pattern wear in there as if they've been sat on. Some wrinkles in the cushions. These are the back seats. These are the front seats. A little bigger and again some wear and it's not identical to each seat. There's a little bit of difference. Insides of the doors look very nice. Maybe those black things go right here. Handles for the doors or kick plates. Um, pouches. These nicely detailed pouches right there. There you go. Where you put like map pockets and for all the doors. More seat cushions, I'm guessing. These are the visors for the windows. There's a lot of detail in this kit. This is the center console, the H1 right here, the big center console, and then this would go on it right here, I'm pretty sure, but maybe not, because that doesn't look right. I'm wrong. And then there's another part of the console there. And then this is the center part of the console between the seats. This part goes to the dash, these are the air vents. And then this goes from here back. And we'll go over that a lot when we look at the instructions. Some more really finely detailed parts right there. These are the armrests for the doors. And this again, I think this would be for the roof liner. But again, all the, the parts here, no ejector pin marks on any of this side. And on this side you have many. So maybe they just put them in places where you're not going to see them. Or you shouldn't see them. Another black one which contains the frame, the wheels, parts of the engine. So, the rims, the frame, which is one really nice one piece frame, and it looks very straight. No real issues with that. Again, ejector pin marks on the bottom, but none on. No, that's not right. Ejector pin marks on the top, because this would go up against the body. And then none on the bottom where if you picked it up and put a mirror under it, you wouldn't see him. Radiator, very nice detail. Various vents, windshield wipers, I'm guessing gas caps, some more tow hooks. Some of these parts I have no idea what they are. But there's a lot of detail in this kit. These are the mirrors for the outside. Passenger side and driver side mirrors. So far, no flash, no burring, nothing just ejector pin marks where you're probably not going to see them, and multicolored sprues. And we have another red one. You can see inside this bag right here. Those little red things. I'm guessing that's where some flash came off in the bag. Body panels. Outsides of the doors. I'm guessing these are probably the outsides of the doors too. The back hatch. The body panels for the side. So the doors will go here and here. Roof comes down here. This is the front windshield frame. Some more tiny little bits. I can't tell where that flash came from. And again, ejector pin marks all over this side because the inside of the doors will go here. And this will be in the inside. So maybe 
I misspoke about those other ejector pin marks and you won't really see them except on the top part, the roof. Those you'd see. Another black one. This has engine and suspension parts in it. Nice springs. I'd paint them a metallic color and then leave the part in black so it looks realistic. This is the dashboard. Nice detailing on it. Probably decals for the gauges, but we'll find that out when we get there. Springs. Right? Suspension parts, not springs, sorry. And these looks like these would be for steering. And there's the steering wheel. And it's just got a Hummer engraved in there. Let me see that. Hoses. On the H1, they had an air compressor under the hood. I think that's this part here. So you could inflate and deflate the wheels. And I'm not sure what these parts are. But I'm guessing part of the roof rack. Look at that differentials. And those arms right there. A fine detail on those. And the differential. Cup holder. Really nice detail for the cup holder. I'm telling you, there's some really good detail on this. There's a um, tie rod. And again, no burring. These hoses. Oh, there is a little burring right there. Seam line right there. That's the first I've seen. And a little tiny one on this hose. Again, first I've seen. And this hose doesn't look to have any. There's the brake in the gas pedal. Very nice. One more sprue of gray parts. This is the engine. Finally got to the engine. Everybody knows I'd love to build me an engine. Transmission. Two halves. The way it looks though, it's probably going to be okay because this might be where the transmission pan would come off. Uh, engine block. Basic. Got these huge injector pin things right there that came off really easy um, same with on the fan there's three of those there and again they came off really easy okay heads valve covers exhaust manifold alternator I'm not sure if that's a clutch plate or not. And the serpentine belt system. And the fan. The fan's got some nice detail. Well, there is kind of a little seam line running right there. I don't know if you'd be able to get it cleaned up or not. Okay, but the engine parts are nice. Right here, these would be the spark plugs. So all you do is put some wires in them. I don't see a distributor unless this is the distributor and not the alternator that's because the alternator is right here hmm check that out in the instructions and tires and string rubber tires love them or hate them but these, there is no seam line on that whatsoever. Oh, I'm wrong. There's a little one right there. Little tiny one. I'm going to have to clean these out, but BF Gadrich. Not Goodrich, Gadrich. So they got around the copyright thing by substituting two O's for two A's. BF Gadrich. 
nice tires and you're going to want to sand them down anyway to show some wear so it's a tiny little seam line right there and it doesn't look like it goes all the way around it's right there so for those some poly caps and a piece of string not sure what the string's for at this point and clear parts clear parts, two screws of clear parts and they're protected by a protective film which is very nice and I'm not going to take it off because these are all flat parts so you should be able to see no distortion at all Those are very clear, very smooth, very flat, clear parts. Front windscreen, side windows, uh, back side windows, headlights, side markers or turn signals. And here, more side markers and turn signals. So, very nice clear parts. You know, they're flat, clear plastic, so they couldn't have been. There's no con. There's no curves to them. Alright, a little bit of PE. This is for the rear view mirror inside. And the two rear view mirrors outside. Look how reflective that is. That's going to add a really nice touch. They're um, self adhesive. <coughs> PE for the grills. I'm thinking those are for the disc brakes, brake pads. And I'm not sure what that part is. A little tiny decal sheet with just the gauges. A couple other for the battery. All right. Over here, instructions. Typical main instructions. A little bit about the Hummer. If you want to read it, pause it when it's not zooming in and out. Color call outs. They are in AK. Ming has a partnership with AK now, so that's what the color callouts are going to be for. There we go. Cooperating. Tools. I'm guessing Chinese and Russian. Start with the gear hub assembly. That's where the poly caps go, so the wheels are going to slide into there. Suspension, suspension onto the frame. I still think that's the um, air compressor. We'll have to find out later on. More suspension onto the frame. This is underneath, so that's where the transaxle will go. Two pieces for that. Actually, it says fuel tank. Okay, so the fuel tank is right there. And front, back. Drive train. So your drive shafts, your exhaust pipe. Putting the engine together. Begging to be detailed up. I was right, that is a clutch plate. And I still don't see where the distributor would be. But, maybe it's electronic fuel injection. I don't know, I'll have to look into that. Bumpers, engine going into the frame, exhaust pipe, another exhaust pipe coming out from there, looks like a skid plate, wheels going on, another skid plate, I don't know if I put the wheels on yet because depending on how you're going to paint it, but you should have painted the frame before you put the engine in. 
floor assembly. So yes, this was the top part. There's the center console. Front console, center console. There's some plates for the, the vents and the radio. And the cup holder, a couple more vents. Center console, decals, layouts. Steering wheel going in there. Putting in all the other consoles. This is for the seats. So you've got seat handles. They're on the actually good framing, like in the real thing. Reclinable. Rear bench seat. So you've got three seats and a rear bench seat. Oh, no, you got four seats and a rear facing bench seat. That's what it is because there's so much room in between those seats. I get it. Air filter. That is the air compressor. Attaching the interior to the frame. Two side panels for the body. Definitely not your usual automotive build. You have two side panels that attach to your interior tub. Then your windshield. Then all the parts on the inside and outside of your windshield. Running lights. And the windshield's going on. These are the back doors. So the doors open side by side. Tail lights. Glass pieces. And dashboard instrument panel, rear view mirror. The roof part, which has many parts that go into it, speakers, grab handles, a rear center, no, that's the center, um, in the center of the roof, because there's a dome light. Windows, so to paint this, if you don't want it red, which I don't, you have to paint all these panels separate and be very careful with them so they're all the same shade because usually when you paint body panels separately sometimes shading gets different if you don't paint your hood on your car when you're painting your model car the hood will be either lighter or darker usually because you don't have the same movement while you're painting it same thing could happen to this especially if you painted some glossy color like black so I have to think about how to do that the right way because I really don't want it red. Tow hooks, that's what the string is for, for the winch. Brush guard, radiator. There's the mesh that goes on, the PE mesh. The hood, top of the hood with the grate and the PE mesh. Again, you're going to have to paint this when you paint all these other side panels. Okay, these are brush guards. I thought they were wrong. Roof racks, but they're brush guards for underneath. Protect the bottom. Insides of the doors. Again, you're going to have to paint those when you paint the body. Before you put them together. And then whatever color you paint the interior is going to have to be separate. Because I don't really want the gray interior either. Sprue map. Hmm, no spare tire. A spare tire holder. This is showing, looks like white, it's not in color, and whatever these two colors are, I don't have the paint in front of me, but let's see. For some gloss black, gloss black, gloss red, gloss white. I'm not going to go with any of those colors. Maybe black. Or I'll just make my own color. I did not see what those, if those were brake discs or another part. They're not brake discs because there's no way you'd see them.
these are two of the PE parts right there. It looks like they're the hinges for lowering and raising the front windscreen. Not for the seats. Not for the interior. Not for the engine. Well, I missed it somewhere because I don't see him. Anyway, I'm not going to drag it out, drag you guys out while I look for where they are. So, good kit, nice detail, interesting assembly though, very interesting, especially this body. You can figure out how to paint it the way you want it, make it all the same color, or you just weather the sh shit out of it and see what it does. I'm still trying to figure out P parts. Oh well, I'll figure it out another time. So, I hope you enjoyed this review of the main kit. Um, I haven't seen a Hummer in this scale before. I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, mention in the comments below. But. As far as I can tell, this is the only one available in this scale, and it's a brand new tool. It's got some definitely nice parts. It's just going to be a challenge to paint it. But challenge is why we're modelers. So, I hope you enjoyed it, my fellow styring craftsmen. And let me know what you think. And I will see you on the next one.